Hello and welcome to 1320, the coolest hangout for youth, teens, everyone in between, in Trinity and beyond. Yes, hi, I am Joseph Rafiki, for those who do not know me, and for those who know me, I am Joseph Rafiki. <laughs> uh, so we are, oh, oh, wait, happy new month, first of all, happy new month. This is February, second month of the year. Mm. I have a question to ask you, I know it has nothing to do with today's episode, but uh, your resolutions, have you followed them through? Uh, have you like slapped down kiasi ama you are like some people who are like mean nanza mwaka wangu february nanza 2023 february just answer that in the comments below or or don't you just self internalize so hi welcome to a new month and a new month probably just means something a new summon series and this summon series is <clears throat> better I'm not saying that this summon series is better than the other one. The name of this summon series is better. That's that's it. And uh, you would ask why better? Because I I will quote the psalmist here. He says, "Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the in the tents of the wicked." <laughs> the tents. <laughs> of the weekend ah yes that's why this summon series is better because it's better one thing than the other better serving god than dwelling with the wicked yeah good 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 uh so as we get into this word yes we are basically focusing i think it's today or the whole series depending on how this goes you're focusing it on this word specifically Hmm. Yeah, so David is a psalmist for those who don't know uh, decided to do things God's way okay, that's why for starters God says that David is the man after his own heart because whatever he willed, David did unlike his predecessor Saul, who did things his own way, but we are not going to be talking about David and Saul today or are we? Anyway, so uh, we are supposed to follow this example of David. Okay, we need to aspire to do our things in accordance to the word of God, in accordance to the will of God. And uh, we are going to be taking a deep dive into some very heavy scripture. By heavy, I don't mean like it's complicated, I mean like it's long. We are used to just having like from verse 1 to verse 4. Now this is going to be a long one. But before we get there, I need us to ask ourselves this question. Why would the psalmist say that better is one day in the courts of the Lord? Just one day. Like, out of all the years that you've lived, countless thousands of days, right? Better is one day than all those thousands that you've lived, being at the courts of the Lord, okay? He was talking about the presence of God how being in the presence of God is more fulfilling than doing anything else in the world. Technically, that's what he meant. And we know that David was passionate about worship. He danced until his clothes fell off. We know that story. And <coughs> mind you, this is him being king. Okay, this is not just him being a hustler like a shepherd, Hukuchini. No, this is him as king. And as a king, you have everything you'd ever want. You like that farm. That farm is mine. Ahab did that. As a king, he had all the power. Okay? As a king, he'd be like, I want to eat mm, mm, pork loin chops. Yeah! <laughs> okay, the was a bit too dramatic. But then he chose to say that it's better one day being in the presence of God than all of those things that he could get as king. Yet we, mere men, uh, usually put ourselves first. We don't really care for the will of God. We don't really care to be in the presence of God. We are like, we get to church during service time, 
the thought in your head is when will the service end so I can go and do ABC you see the difference between us and the king hmm? by the king I mean David okay the other kings that are in Israel some of them were a bit uh, shady but uh, anyway we will see these qualities that we need to pick up or characteristics that are marked by David that helped him live for God and fulfill God's purpose see live for God fulfilled God's purpose there you see there's always this question here of you think you ask yourself something like what is my purpose in life I don't get it why am I here but then instead of you listening to God you are trying to figure it out on your own that's why we miss the mark okay we need to live in line with God's purpose we need to live in line with his will we need to serve him then he will show us the way okay it's like you being let's say stranded in a place that you're new to and then somebody comes with a map and they're like no 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 i i want to i want to find out where this road leads like uh, yes you take this map it will guide you like no 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 i will find it that's us basically anyway so i want us to turn to second samuel samuel for those uh, who are in yes like me second samuel chapter 15 verse 1 to 26 okay second samuel chapter 15 verse 1 to 26 and the bible says and it came to pass after this that absalom for those people who don't know absalom is one of david's sons Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and fifty men to run before him. And Absalom, Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou, are you? And he said, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, Thy matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee, to hear you. Absalom said, Moreover, O oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which has any suit, lawsuit, probably, or cause might come unto me, and I will do him justice. And it was so that when any man came near to him, and to do him obeisance, this, this version he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him and on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment so Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel okay the people supported him verse 7 and it came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said unto the king I pray thee let me go and pay my vow which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. For thy servant vowed a vow while I abode at Geshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And Absalom went with went two hundred men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. Okay, they just went because they are called. And Absalom sent for Ahitoh, Ahitophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices, and the conspiracy was strong. For the people increased continually with Absalom. And there came a messenger to David saying, The hearts of men of Israel are after Absalom. Hmm. Absalom, Absalom. Hmm. And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, for, sh for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly, and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servant said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth, and all 
his household after him. And the king left ten women, which were concubines, to keep the house. And the king went forth and all the people after him and tarried in a place that was not far off, that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him and all the Cherethites and all the Pelethites and all the Gittites, 600 men which came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. And the king said to Itai the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? Like, uh, will you also go wherever you are going with us? Return to your place and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger and also an exile. Where thou camest but yesterday, whereas thou camest but yesterday, should I this day make thee a poor, mm, thee go up and down with us? Seeing I go whither I may, return thou and take back <laughs> thy brethren. Mercy and truth be with thee. Let me just paraphrase this <laughs> in the easiest way possible. Uh, you came yesterday, okay? So I'm not going to tell you to come with me and probably you lose your life. So just go back, okay? And take your people with you. Basic translation. So Itai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives and as my Lord the king lives, Surely in what place my Lord shall the king be? Whether in death or life, even there, so will thy servant be. He was ready to go with the king no matter the outcome. Okay. Hmm. And David said to Itai, go and pass over. And Itai the Gittite passed over and all his men and all the little ones that were with him. And all the country wept with a loud voice and all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the brook Kidron and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness and lo Zadok also and all the Levites were with him bearing the ark of the covenant of God and they set down the ark of God and Abiathar went up until all the people had done passing out of the city and David the king and the king said to Zadok carry back the ark of God into the city I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord. He will bring me again and shew me both it and his habitation. But if he thus says, I have no delight in thee, behold, here I am. Let him do to me as he seemeth good unto him. Okay, this is the king talking to Zadok, like one of the chief priests. Yeah, that's, as I said, this is a very heavy scripture. So from from this scripture we can kind of contrast the two the two people here the two main characters here David and Absalom So if if we read this like as we have read these verses we find out that Absalom seemed to put the king first but he wanted to be first He appeared to serve the people but he was self-serving that's number 2 number 3 he appeared humble but it was a haughty spirit Number four, he talked like a worshipper of God, but was false worship. Many times we do this. Knowingly, unknowingly, we are Absaloms of our own day and age. We might act right before people, but deep down, we are the worst of the worst. We might try to pretend that we are humble, but we really want to show off. We really want to brag like we are better than the others. And other times we appear to serve people, okay? <laughs> this happens mostly in Kenya. You appear to serve a person so that one day you can call in a favor. I don't know about other places, but I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Anyway, let's just uh, contrast that with David for a second, okay? This is what David's version looks like. He had no interest to be first or to be recognized or to be adored. He simply wants God and God's will, God's ways and God's purpose. That's what he wanted. He didn't really care about him being like on the throne and stuff. We see no focus on self but thinking of others. When he's telling the other people, you just came here, jana jana, juicy juicy jana jana. 
Do you say Jana Jana by the way? It just came here, Juicy Juicy. There's no need for you to do this for me. You go and take your family due to safety. He's saying about others, okay? He's not like, you know what? Yes, stand with me. I'm your king. No. Number three, we see David humbled, humiliated, and running away. Even when he is abused and calls names later, he just keeps going. Okay? He's not like, I am the king. I can destroy you if I want. Do you know me? Do you know who I am? <laughs> that is what uh, most of us usually do, by the way. Something small happens to you. You already have this urge of showing people who you really are. David was different, okay? Number four, we see a worshipper who has abandoned himself, his life, his hopes and dreams to God, and does what God wants of him. That other guy was fake. This is the realest of the real. Okay? Now this kind of pursuit for God. It's not even this kind of pursuit. This kind of desperation for God. This is what we need in our church today. And I don't mean our church today as in our parents and the people who are older than us. Come on. We are... This is, You've had this before. We are the, the leaders of tomorrow. We are the next generation. Okay? So we need this in our in our circle of church. Because I know we are like, yeah, you know, teens, we are teens. We don't need uh, the pressure that goes on in the big church. There is no such thing as a big church. It's just that we are put into these categories so that we can be taught in ways that we can understand. Yeah, that's true. And so we need to understand that whatever that the big church is taught is also applicable to us. It's not that when you turn 18, that's when it will be applicable to you. No. We need to learn how to be desperate for God. We need to put our ego, our belief that we are better than others, our pride. We need to put all of that away. Okay, If we are going to achieve what God has said for us to achieve, we need to put all of those away. Mm. And now we are seeing how the better one day versus a thousand comes in. Just doing one thing, just being in the presence of God, you find utmost peace. Like you can you can try, you can try having all the riches in the world. <laughs> Trust me, most of the rich people don't feel complete. They can have amazing cars, big houses, lands everywhere but then they're not really complete. And then you can find somebody who has almost nothing, like nitua kukajumba, kaku rent, but that person has peace. There's always that difference, okay? It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter the things that you can do or the things that you have done. Just take time and spend it in the presence of God. Now let's get to our points, okay? Let me give you these three habits. Let's cultivate them as we go on this year. Yes, whatever we learn here is not just for this week. It's for the whole year. And this one is uh, basically what you have learned from David. I hope you are taking notes. Even if you've not taken notes the whole, the whole time that you've been here this episode, just write this down. Develop the habit of constant communication with God. Yeah. That's point number one. I would want to go deep into it. And actually, I think I will. I was supposed to say, but it's self-explanatory. No, I think I will. We need to learn that communication is everything. I know you have seen these memes of uh, a man and a woman who are in a relationship. They're trying to make it work, but then their communication is off. Like uh, the man says, uh, the woman says, I want us to communicate more. Then the man says, okay, so what's the problem? Then the woman says, K. Yeah, you've seen those memes. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, constant communication. When you say what you want, God will listen. When you thank him, after him giving you what you've asked for, God will say, you know what? This is a good man. He did not just run away like everybody else. Have some more, my child. 
constant communication. There's that friend of yours that you have that no matter what you say, that person will always be like there by your side, right? Now say that to a total stranger. It will not be the same. It will not work the same. Okay? So, need to develop the habit of prayer. For those people who didn't know, prayer is a way of communicating to God. It's not just something we say because we are Christians. Number two, develop the habit of quick response to God. Okay, when God says something, instantly respond. Do not wait a month, a year or so. Then be like, you know what, yeah, I had God tell me this. I think this is the time I should do it. No, do it then, like at that moment. When he gives you an idea, as insane as it might be, work on it. Okay? It's God, after all. And if you said something, yeah, you, you need to listen to it. Number three, habit number three, develop the habit of a daily hunger for God. Okay? That thing of... You also do this with, hum with human beings, by the way. Uh, hey, touchy one control. We do this thing with human beings. There are some people that we don't really talk to unless we need something. That's that's not a, that's not a healthy relationship with that person, right? Same way it's not a healthy relationship with God when you only pray or ask something of him when you need it. We need to be constantly hungry for God. We need to want to know more of him. We need to ask for his guidance. Just things that might help us in the long run find like the calling that God has given us. But then as it's only when you're sick is when you pray, oh God, please help me get better. Then you get better and like join you and you go. That's not a healthy way to live. So yes, focus on these three habits. Okay? Constant communication, quick response, daily hunger. Focus on those. Okay? Better is one day at the courts of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this powerful word that you've given us. Thank you for uh, speaking to us today, helping us understand that we need to spend more time in your presence if we are going to uh, achieve our purpose father we need to do things that are in line with your will and of god i thank you for everybody who's taken their time to listen to this message i pray father that you may speak to them that you may uh, keep on revealing yourself to them through this word and even whatever else that they read whatever else that they listen throughout this week I pray, Father, uh, blessing your name, blessing you for uh, this word that you've given us because it has come at a very crucial point when we actually need it the most as a country. We need it the most as a people, even as individuals, of our God. I thank you, King of Glory, for there's no one else like you. I pray all of this, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you people. I love you very much. Nice one like a pastor. <laughs> I love you very much. Uh, yeah. I shall see you next week. Peace.